hot you've been in. I think it is, isn't it? Right on the river. We've left the little mountain top where we celebrated my birthday last week. That was like, in, what, 45 minutes in that direction? And we are now right on the border with Washington and Oregon. In fact, I think the border lies right in the middle of this river somewhere. So that bank over there, that is Oregon. We're in Washington now, Oregon there, and this week we are finally hitting the Oregon coast. Honestly, for the past, what, four weeks, every single video, someone has been like, can't wait to get to, to Oregon. You're gonna love the Oregon coast. The Oregon coast is amazing. You gotta go and see the Oregon coast. So this week it is happening finally. It's got a lot to live up to, but first we've got to cross this massive bridge. I think it's the longest truss bridge in the US, which means it's a bloody big bridge. What's really cool about this bridge is that all of a sudden it just goes boom, real big steep bit. It's just to let like, obviously the container ships or the tankers through. Yeah, it's like a little roller coaster. It's really steep. So this is Astoria, where the Goonies was filmed. And if you want to see more of that, we went there in last week's video. But now we're officially back in Oregon. Back heading south, baby. One final Goonies location. It is the classic Haystack Rock, one of the most iconic views on the whole Oregon coastline. And you know what? Even in and of itself, it is what an amazing it's view. Beautiful. Here. Absolutely breathtaking. This is like one of the most iconic scenes in the Goonies. So they line up with the doubloon so that it uh, helps them work out where the treasure for One Eyed Willie is. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, our first glimpse of the Oregon coast. It looks absolutely incredible. Apparently on this beach there's a waterfall. That's what we're heading to, but we have no idea if it's that way or that way. Yeah. So we're gonna take a guess go this way first. I found it. But we're in the like end of summer, aren't we? So um it's not the most impressive. There it is. It's less waterfall and more overflowing gutter pipe. I can see a cave over here though. Over this way. Jump, 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 jump. Oh, it's in here. Isn't this literally like a smuggler's cave? Surely, it'll be a crime if it wasn't used for smuggling. Okay, we're gonna go in just to see how far it goes. It's all blocked off at the back, but... Yeah. That's cool, isn't it? Everybody else has come to look at it as well. Everyone gets here and they're like, is that it? Do you know what this beach is actually called? This is called Hug Beach. <laughs> Hug Point Beach. Hug Point Beach. But I think it should be called Smuggler's Beach because that cave was really cool. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why we have Scout because they got on like this from the first minute. They played and played and played five days straight. Yeah. They were amazing. River's, River's not like that with every dog. No, no. River's very, very choosy about who she plays with. <laughs> You're the lucky one, Scout. Hey, buddy. The Highway 101 takes you south, straight down the Oregon coast. It's a fabled road with an almost infinite amount of secret coves, windswept beaches and hidden gems that you could easily spend a lifetime exploring. Yet another incredible road. One minute we're driving at the top of these cliffs which just crash down into the sea with all these views of all the rock stacks and the mountains. And now the road is twisted around and we're in this lush green, huge forested valley. There's a lot of farms down here and it kind of reminds us of home a little bit, doesn't it? It does, yeah, yeah. It's definitely got like English countryside vibes around here. I want to know if any other couples do this when you're driving. We're driving through this cute little town and all we're saying to each other is just re reading signs. Like, oh, Oregon State Park. Oh, the grill. Shearwater. Romance package. Romance package at Shearwater Inn. Does anybody else do that when we're just reading the signs to each other as we drive past them? Biodiesel. Space Age. That's quite cool. <laughs> so the north of the Oregon coast is really, really busy. So we've come a couple of hours south. Incredible drive the whole way down, but we're getting really, really hungry now. So 
we're gonna try and find somewhere to eat. Obviously we're on the coast, so seafood is a big deal here. So yeah, hopefully people are still serving because it's a bit later than I thought actually, it's like three o'clock. So yeah, let's see what we can find. I can see whales, I can see whales, I think. Probably can't see on the camera, I think they're a bit far away. Yeah, it is. Oh my god, I just saw his tail flip up. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you always get the good whale stuff. I know. Does anyone remember when we went whale watching in Nova Scotia? I went in the morning and Ben went in the afternoon because it was a bit too hot to leave the dogs on their own, so we split it. When I went in the morning, it was f so foggy, couldn't see anything. I did see whales, um, they were just chilling in the water and it was awesome, but Ben went out and it was like a different day. Clear blue skies, the whales were breaching, jumping around, splashing. It looked amazing. So we're at Gracie's Sea Hag. I'm guessing this is Gracie and the Sea Hag. I've heard great things about Gracie's clam chowder. That sounds a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gracie. Shall we go and see? Gracie's Sea Hag famous clam chowder, voted number one on the Oregon coast and written up in the New York Times cookbook. I'm really tempted by the crab mac and cheese. I don't know what to have. Right, this is the uh, Gracie's famous clam chowder. It's topped with paprika and some basil, I think. That is really, really good. And it's like cheesy and creamy, but like fresh. It's not too heavy. Oh my god. I think you would really like that. I know you won't try it. Yeah. It's really, really good. What have you had? I've gone for Alaskan halibut and chips. Couple fries. Fries. <laughs> That's good. Oh, nice light batter. Gone for as well the crab mac and cheese. Mm. That is one, if not the best mac and cheese I've ever had. I'm not joking. That is so light. Like mac and cheese can be quite like heavy and rich, and that is just like so light and creamy. Like the like the crab, it's almost like a white wine, creamy garlic sauce. Mmm. That's amazing. God, we are both stuffed after that. One thing that takes a little bit of getting used to is still in the states is that they bring the bill to you kind of straight away so you don't have to go and ask for the bill like back in Europe and back home it could be an hour after you've eaten before you go and get the bill but here like she bought it before we'd even finished our main courses she, she did say there was no hurry she's like it's just there for when you're ready but they do bring the bill so you kind of you eat you pay you go you don't hang around for hours like back home and it's still like yeah it's, it still takes some getting used to What do you want? Do you don't think we'll stay here? What do you reckon? So we just pulled into a place called Mulak Beach. This was like the van life hotspot on the 101 in Oregon where you could stay overnight. But there's been recent notices posted telling you to move. We thought we'd just come and check it out and just see what the situation was. There is not one other camper here and there's these like little um, hammered in Oh, right. Little leaflet <clears throat> signs um, saying all personal property has to be removed um, within 1,500 feet of those signs or it will be like towed away. And I think what happened is people were like setting up here and leaving trailers and campers here. And that's what that notice is probably right. for to say get your shit out of here. So I don't think we're going to stay here. Take two. Your destination is on the right. Look at this. Okay, so we have pulled up onto Nye Beach. This parking limit's here is 16 hours, which obviously just stops people setting up shop here for weeks on end. But for us, we're gonna be leaving tomorrow. It's absolutely perfect. <laughs> oh 
first sunset in Oregon, baby. Yes, indeed. I was thinking about that then. I wasn't sure. I don't know if you can see just behind Chesterhead. You probably can't see on camera, but it looks like a pirate ship from here. Oh yeah. Which is quite apt because One-Eyed Willie from Goonies is just up there. So it could be a pirate ship or it could be a ghost ship. Like the Flying Dutchman. Like the Flying Dutchman. I can never remember the story of the Flying Dutchman. Do you not know the story of the Flying no, Dutchman? No, I do, but I always get it mixed up with other other like ships. Oh, okay. So the story of the Flying Dutchman. So the Flying Dutchman was a Dutch captain back in the 1700s. He was captain of this huge ship. Him and his crew sailed it around the Cape of Good Hope when they encountered horrific winds, massive waves. And he said, I'm going to get through this storm and back to Amsterdam, even if I have to sail the seas for eternity. Now, some believe that the devil, or Davy Jones himself, heard this oath and bound him to it, so that when he died, his soul was bound to a ship destined never to reach land and to sail the seven seas until the end of time. You may, if you're unlucky, see the Flying Dutchman. I reckon it might have just been a fisherman trawler, but let's hope it's not, not the Flying so Dutchman then. Yeah, it's <laughs> I'm going to put a warning on this video, <laughs> like Tina from Bob's Burgers. Who's Tina from Bob's Burgers? <laughs> Slept really well here last night, it was so peaceful. Woke up to the most beautiful sunshine on the beach, what an amazing spot. And it's kind of good that they've got parking limits here because you know, it means it's not hopefully going to get taken away because people have to respect it. So we are off early this morning so that we don't overstay our welcome. But first night, on, first night on the Oregon coast has been a success. Uh, that was really nice. Even though it was on like a, a busy road, it was so quiet in the evenings. But what a view! I know it's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. So I don't know if they only have these in like the northern states because we've only seen them in what Alaska, Alaska, and Washington, Washington and Oregon now. But they're just these little independent kind of coffee sheds that you drive up to and order coffee. Um, they're just like little single booths in like random places. We see them all the time and we have never stopped to get a coffee. So there's one on the road now, so we're going to go and get a coffee. Jeb. I think we're sold out. That's okay. We've um, got brownies, we've got our scones here, we've got cookies, cinnamon rolls, muffins. Ooh. Coffee cake. What? Oh, coffee cake, please. <laughs> yeah. Cinnamon crumble coffee. Yeah, cake. yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Cakes, uh, $11. Okay. Thank you. Coffee cake with a cinnamon crumb. Completely different to what I normally have. That's really good. Yeah? Mmm. It's quite dense. It's not a light. If you threw that at someone, it would hurt. Oof. That's good coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So eleven dollars for two coffees and a little cake. It's pretty good. Honestly, this road just keeps getting better and better. Every corner is jaw dropping. The road twists and turns around jagged cliffs and running alongside you is a seemingly never ending beach. This is the stuff road trip dreams are made of. Oh my God, look where we are. We're gonna go and find some hobbits. Hobbits, hobbits, hobbits. There is no way we can come here and not do the hobbit trail down to Hobbit Beach. Look at this little hobbit tunnel through the sand. Oh, oh wow, look at all the shops in here. Oh yeah. Oh wait, oh god yeah. Oh yeah, and down here look. Oh yeah. Oh great, we're talking in some sort of murder scene. <laughs> a crab horror film. Yeah. Crabastrophe. A, a crabastrophe. We're well, going to Hobbit Beach. Oh wow. Babe, look at this. Whoa. This beach is absolutely stunning. Golden white sands, green forests behind, mountain there, and beautiful, beautiful blue sea. This is out of like some sort of 
Wow, like desert island film. <laughs> it is absolutely amazing. So, so beautiful. Say this is definitely the highlight of the of the coast so far. Everything we've seen. Just this agree. beach is phenomenal. And it's not very busy, which I think makes it even more special. Exactly. There's like enough spaces like ten cars, so it's hardly hardly anyone here. The sand is honestly like white powdery island sand. It's gorgeous here. Wow. 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 In the words of Owen Wilson. <laughs> Wow. We are getting our first glimpse of the Oregon sand dunes and oh my god. Oh. So the Oregon sand dunes are so big and the area is so huge. Do you know the, the sci-fi novels Dune? I forget the guy who wrote it but they made it into a film. But that, this is what inspired that landscape and those novels. Oh, wow. Bit of a leg, leg burner, isn't it? It is. I don't know if you can hear it, the foghorn is going off. Yeah. We haven't heard a foghorn since we were in Nova Scotia. In fact, one of our first park ups on this entire trip after we shipped it from the UK was next to a lighthouse with the loudest foghorn and it was going all night. It's something we had never experienced before, is it? Never experienced and I love the sound of them. Yeah. They sound so like old and mysterious. <laughs> I think our plan tonight, talking of foghorns, is to go and park up near the lighthouse here with views out over the bay, views out over the sand dunes. Yeah, what I think place. we're going to park here, aren't we? What a place. Well, I think judging by the amount of cars here, this is the place to watch the sunset. Except I've just been sat here, best seat in the house, and sunset's quite a way away yet, yeah? and there is literally a massive chunk of cloud from the horizon up in a massive band, and the sun just disappeared. Like, I was like, it's not sunset, where's the sun gone? Where is the sun gone? And you look out, and there is just What's really, what's, really, what's best, <laughs> what's best right, is there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, twelve 12 cars here and oh, you can't see, everyone's all of a sudden Leaving Just leaving, all these cars here, they're all just rolling out, look at them all, they're all going <laughs> It was as though someone had just turned the light off Yeah Like it was it and, the, and the thermostat, whoa, that's gone down to c -c -c cold. I know. So the sun has now set, it's dark. We've gone to take the dogs out. Wait until you see this lighthouse. You have never seen anything like it. So the lighthouse has got like this red panelling around it. So it's casting a continuous white and red light everywhere. And it is reflecting off the trees. So the trees are just like, glowing in this dappled light and it's just like a light show it's absolutely beautiful Still sing, oh my white phone. Bro, there's a deer over there you can see it in here there's a deer can you shine the torch yes go back to this look at that oh, star there. yeah no. there's a deer coming out of the woods it is magical Right, we all know what time it is and you can really start to see like the circle now that we've done so, so as you can see recently we've not been making a huge amount of progress south we've been going round and round but this week we have made a lot more progress we started this week literally just across the water here on the border with oregon and washington and this 
is our route south that we've done this week. We have just worked our way all the way down this coast. And it's been incredible, hasn't it? It has, it really has. And here we are, just at Umpqua Lighthouse. So the entire Oregon coast. And it has been spectacular. It's been absolutely amazing. So next week, we're gonna be crossing into California. This is a major milestone for us because it is our last US state. After that, we're into Mexico and officially the Central American leg of our journey begins. And it's goodbye to the US and Canada. We've got no tea and no coffee. Just send thoughts and prayers because we literally have no caffeine. <laughs> oh my spirit.